Hi, welcome to my new channel. Um, today I wanted to sort of do an introduction about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, um, and it's so hard to speak on camera, I just realised. Um, but I just wanted to sort of get my story across and what I'm going through at the moment, what I'm doing, and I want to raise awareness for my illness. Um, and I'm really a strong believer about about disability and things like that not being visible so I really kind of want to talk to people and try and get my stories about my um, like past habits and things, things that's happened to me to other people I think it's really important um, and also like other stories like I've heard other people like that I know who have got disabilities or have got issues or problems or illnesses and they've been treated really badly for it and I just think it's totally wrong so I kind of wanted to talk to people about it so you know and um, but I'm going to start off with my story uh, my illness what I'm going through at the moment and what I'm waiting for treatment on um, so I started off at the age of 10 really that's where it kind of started off with the hospitals and things like that um, I always struggled with going to the toilet all the time I was constantly going to the toilet um, and my mum and my dad really struggled with me constantly getting like UTIs so that's like a urine, urine, urine excuse me a urinary infection um, and I also had a lot of problems with my kidneys I used to get loads of kidney infections as well um, so they started about the age of 10 when they got really bad and um, like just just infection after infection after infection and just always really painful always on antibiotics um just it was just awful really it was just like it was just constant pain all the time and at the age of 10 like obviously just leaving primary school and things going to high school it was really scary um my mum really struggled with it found it really upsetting for her and things so I went to um, Manchester, my mum and dad, they took me to Manchester to see a specialist and I had loads of tests done. It turned out that I um, I had reflux in my left kidney and um, an overactive bladder. So like I noticed like I was always going to the toilet, so you know at cinema and things like that I'd go before, in the, between, like in the film, like at the end of the film, I was just constantly going all the time. So it was proper, it was, I noticed a difference between me and my friends basically and that's when it got really severe. Um, uh, so then when I found out about my kidneys, basically if you have reflux in your kidney, what your kidney's job is to do is to, when you drink and eat and things, all the liquid from that goes into your kidneys and what happens is your kidney like filters out all the bad stuff and turns, sends it to your bladder and keeps all the nutrition and sends it to your bloodstream. So having reflux basically means that it wasn't doing that job, it was keeping quite a lot of the and like the bad stuff like the, the like sugars and all those things that you normally should just get rid of in your urine and it was keeping it in the kidney and that's why it was getting constantly infected because it was dirty so it was really difficult to keep flushing it out um, and with an overactive bladder it basically means that your bladder is a muscle it always if, if you didn't know that it's a muscle um, and basically it when you go to the toilet it contracts and when you don't go to the toilet like when you're filling your bladder up it expands so it's like almost like a balloon like filling up and like going out <laughs> i'm rubbish at explaining it um so basically i had an overactive bladder so it meant that my bladder was just constantly like contracting all the time so it's crazy really um it made, made sense that that's why I was going to the toilet all the time and also because it was contracting so much it wasn't always getting rid of all my urine so a lot of my urine was settling in the bottom of my bladder that's why I was getting so many infections and sometimes the infection would travel up the tube of my bladder into my kidney and that's why I was in hospital and doing all these things anyway so I had um, a course of Botox in my bladder to try and stiffen the bladder up um, to try and stop it from contracting it didn't work five sessions later of Botox at a really young age about 13 it just wasn't working so the doctor kind of like cancelled that out and just thought let's just leave it um, nothing really got done over those past couple of years I just found it really difficult to control it like I was just going all the time and it was just difficult so I just kind of got on with my life I kind of just thought you know what if this is me this is me that's that's how it is you know it crap really um, but you can't you can't do everything about sometimes you have to accept what's wrong with you and, and make it a, a bonus make it a, a thing that you need to be strong about so that's what i kind of did really um until about the age of 18 uh i noticed that like my pain in my bladder was getting really sore 
uh, when I go to the toilet I was getting way more infections and they were actually getting to the point where I was being hospitalised because the infections were that bad. I was bleeding, um, it was just, the pain was just horrific, like I know a lot of people who go through what I have, um, I've watched YouTube videos and things like that about my condition and it's just awful, like the pain is just just excruciating, it's chronic pain. Um, so basically I went for some tests and actually did a cystoscopy which means that they look inside your bladder and this was about a couple, about eight months ago, nine months ago now um, and it actually turned out that I had interstitial cystitis which is known as IC um, and it's also known as painful bladder syndrome. I had a bladder that was too small, it actually held up to 250 millilitres um, so it just didn't stretch, it didn't, it didn't expand, that's how much it held, it was really small, it's like a little like child's bladder basically, you know I'm 18, I've got like a, like a tiny bladder um, and also because of all the infections over the past years it becomes scar tissue which obviously, excuse me, which obviously when a muscle expands it's flexible, it expands like a balloon but could you imagine trying to expand a tennis ball? It just doesn't work so that's basically why it was such an issue because it was such so like tough it just couldn't expand so obviously when I was going to the toilet and the ur I was drinking like normal like normal people it was filling and filling and filling it just wasn't getting any bigger um, so that was there were my issues um, and that's why it was so painful like I don't know if anyone has ever had cystitis before. A lot of girls get it, um, even boys get it as well, of course, but girls mainly get it to do with their periods. Like when it's when you've got bad periods, it can come sometimes cause interstitial um, cystitis. Uh, going out on the lash, a heavy night out can cause it. Sexual intercourse, all these different things can cause it. But cystitis is like um, a three-day thing. You can get antibiotics for it and it can be fixed. And it's basically where it just sits in your bladder so it's not actually interstitial interstitial basically means within the walls so your bladder is like um it's like an onion it's got loads of layers and like layers to the muscle so basically um interstitial cystitis is cystitis within the walls of the bladder and unfortunately antibiotics don't help it it's there for life and a, and it's crazy like i've done research on and over 300,000 women each year get into cystitis like that's just crazy that amount and for me to know how much pain I'm in with my cystitis to think that people all over the world get it makes me quite emotional because it's just such a painful thing for people to go through and to know that there's not a lot of treatment you can have because it's just so painful is really heartbreaking so after I found out that it was really difficult at first, I actually found out that my <laughs> my condition was so severe um, that no one could actually help me where I live. I live in um, Blackpool, and that uh, that's like, you know, the closest place was Manchester. So we got referred to Manchester, and I was really happy. I was like, yes, I'm gonna get it fixed, gonna get it sorted. Heard this for someone to look, and basically the person in Manchester had retired. <laughs> so I had to look elsewhere we then found out that there was a professor in Sheffield who um, was incredible and he took me on straight away um, we went to visit him in Sheffield and he gave me the news that I was going to have to have um, my bladder removed he basically said that unfortunately my bladder is in such a state and it's so infected um, and it's so decayed it's dying basically my blood was basically dying it couldn't cope with the pressure of my body being normal other than itself um to get the news it was really heartbreaking um the surgery is a giant surgery it's you know it, it is it's equal to open heart surgery it's it, you're removing a, an organ at the end of the day and it, it puts a lot of strain on all the other all, all your other organs um it was hard to get over, you know, it was really difficult. I've got a boyfriend who's amazing and he's so supportive and my family are great as well. And to think um, to think that that is what I had to do to get better, it was, a, you know, it's a big hurdle that you have to overcome. But I was ready to take the jump. Like, I've been in so much pain. I've not been able to work because the pain was that bad and I was in hospital every week. I was struggling. Um... And they basically said that if I didn't get treatment, my bladder could rupture, which means that the bladder would just break. It would just either tear to the point where it couldn't be fixed or it would just die. 
and if it died unfortunately there'd be a risk of me going with it which is really hard to hear but it's just the reality of my condition so we had to get something done really fast um and he put me on the emergency list and he said it would be done within three months i've had some procedures bef I've, he's had a look in my bladder he's had i've had procedures before at sheffield i've been for appointments i've had scans um so i'm just waiting now for my my operation it's we're hoping i hope it's june maybe um we're in eight well we're going into april in a couple of days so it's not far off um and i'm just really excited um but mainly getting my story across i just wanted to try and talk to people about the the kind of um issues that people have with uh things like um i'm trying to think how to say it like if you have an illness or a disability that's not really well known i don't have diabetes i don't have problems like that which are all serious issues and should all be completely looked at in the exact same way um but i really wanted to get across that hi my camera died so i'm just going to carry on talking <laughs> Um, I really wanted to get across that disability isn't a physical eye, like a physical thing. Like I've had so many, I've heard so many stories and issues with people who have like such a negative opinion on people's disabilities, and I just think it's so wrong. For an example, I obviously have a problem with my bladder and I've got a problem with my kidney, and because of that, I get a card and I get it on my phone as well. Um, basically to say I can use any disabled toilet or I can use people's staff toilet so when I need the toilet I get in so much pain because I'm stretching my muscle like my muscle is pulling so I need to go to the toilet dead fast like I literally need to find one and go and I went to the traffic centre of all places in Manchester and I went and used a disabled toilet I showed the guy my card he unlocked it for me and I went in there was a mass, and the only reason I did that is because there was a massive queue for ladies. If there isn't a queue, I will always just use the normal toilets for my own pride. Um, but there was a massive queue, and I couldn't wait. Like I was, my bladder was burning. I was like tearing up, so I used it. I stepped out the toilet, and a, an elderly lady was stood in front of me, and she said to me, she said, um, "Have did you get that card off eBay?" And I stood there, and for a moment, I was just in physical shock that someone could could see that I've got a card to prove my disability and a guy has authorised that I've used a toilet and someone can doubt me just because I'm a 20 year old girl who doesn't look unwell who puts a smile on her face and is brave and who doesn't let my illness make me feel any different about myself and she could take that and turn it into such a negative thing that she wanted to embarrass me in front of all these people um, it frustrates me this is my story of that is not the only time it's happened to me it's happened to me many other times before with other people judging me for how i look um i have other friends who have got either disabilities or their parents have got disabilities or their grandparents have got disabilities and they've viewed disabled car car spaces and people have, have have judged them for it and thought they were using it as an advantage a disability is not an advantage that's what i'm trying to get across and this is my message to people a disability is not oh we can get this for free or we can park there or we can a disability when i if i could give back my badge and give back my bladder and be like someone who's normal and use the normal toilets and queue up for five days i would do that I would do that tomorrow but unfortunately sometimes you can't do that you've just got to get on with life be who you are and take take the advantages you get from that and I want to sort of share like share to people that please don't just look at someone who's young or look at someone who looks okay or look at someone and think well they're not disabled because you don't know that person and that's the big thing for me you you don't know what they're going through whether it's a mental disability whether it's an internal disability whether they've got clothes on and you can't see it you know there are so many different <laughs> different illnesses and things that people go through like i'm sure a lot of people didn't even know about what my illness was and had never heard of it before and there's millions of people who are affected by it every day like thousands of people have had my surgery already and i didn't even know it existed before i had my problem so it's really important that people really consider um people's illnesses before they judge it and that's the kind of story i'm getting across if you're on the tube like don't look at someone and think oh 
they don't need to sit down they might need to sit down if they ask you for a certain reason or if someone looks in pain when they're waiting for the toilet maybe offer it to them before if if you don't need it that bad or don't park in a disabled space just because you're just dropping someone off or because someone could really need that disabled space i'm not preaching i'm not being a nagger i'm just saying a lot of people need those things and it's really important to them and to you that might not seem important but it is really important for those other people so enough of the depressing stuff because that was quite deep um but i'm going to start filming more and more videos about my illness i'm going to take you to hospital with me i'm going to do loads of things and even on the day of my surgery i'm going to try and get a few bits film so people who with my illness or people like my friends my family and whoever don't understand what I'm going through or don't know what I'm going through can follow me and I would like to do loads of charity work for my charity if you'd like to check it out my charity um I'll try and link it in the description thing below I've never done it before but I'll try um it's uh, Mitrofenoff which is a certain name of my surgery I know it's really difficult to say but Mitrofenoff support and that's a charity that support people like me who are going through what I'm going through and it's a great, it's like incredible. Like they do so much work, not just for people my age, they do people for like my mum's age, they do people for kids. Like I've seen like three or four year old children having my surgery and I just couldn't imagine that. Like it's just crazy. So um, I appreciate any support. All my friends and family, you're all amazing. And if you're watching this video, I appreciate it so much. It means the world to me to get my story across and to get people to think about visibility of disability make sure you don't judge people on the disabilities and to just live life <laughs> enjoy yourself like literally live life to however you want to do it like just enjoy yourself because i didn't know i had this illness and it stopped me from living like until i have the surgery i can go back to work i can go to the gym properly i can train i can do all these things i can go on holiday i'm not even allowed to go on holiday because of my insurance is too high just enjoy life for who you are and what you do and don't let anything hold you back um so thanks for watching i really appreciate it i'd love you to subscribe if that would that would really mean a world to me and uh thanks for watching thank you